Welcome to Exo Magic Trick number 735. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Exo Magic Trick 733 to 735, click on the link directly below the video and download this workbook. Now, this is the second time I've shot 735. This is a completely different one. So if you are downloading this, uh, if you've already downloaded this workbook before November 8th, 2010, then please go download it again. Now here's uh, what we're going to do in this video. We have some week sales, week 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and these are different products. And what we want is we want to, in a one formula here, tell us what the max three weeks sales are. So for example here, if we look to highlight that, we can see down in the status bar it says 181. We're going to move over to the next week. It's still uh, three weeks though, we have a sum of 201, 164, etc. And we need this formula over here to just look at all the different three weeks uh, sales total and, and tell us what the max is. Now, we can do this simply enough by creating something off to the side, right? We can just use the sum function. Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. And I'm going to highlight the first three week sales. Those are relative cell references, so as we copy this over, that reference will change. Control Enter, copy it over, and drag it down. We can see we have, just as we did with the status bar, the, the sales for this product, and it looks like weeks two to four had the max of 201. So here we can simply say max. We don't want to eye it, right? So we just have the max function look through those different totals, three week totals, and tell us. So you could do it this way, but we want to do it all in one formula. So really the trick here is, well, let's look at these references, right? We somehow need to create in a formula that range right there, then that range right there, then that range. Now let's look at this. If we we're, we need to create different, how many different range? One, two, three, four, so five different references or ranges of cell in one formula. Well, the offset function can create references, and then with that we'll see how to create five different references. But let's look at the pattern here. It's always going to be one row tall by three columns wide. And you can see the first one started there and went over three, but now the next one has to move from the starting point over one, so it needs to move one, and then it's still one by three. The next one moves over two, it's still one by three. This one moves over four, it's one by three, and this one moves over, uh, actually it was move over one, two, three, and this one's four, right? So let's look at the offset and see if we can think of a way to create five different ranges within one formula. I'm going to use the offset. Now, offset is great. It can create references uh, inside of other formulas. Now there's five arguments. The starting point, that means, hey, where do you want me to start? So I'm going to start there. And there's four other arguments. Rows means from that starting point, do you want me to move up or down any number. We don't, so by default if you leave it blank by typing a comma, it'll assume that we're not moving from that starting position up or down any, but columns. Now remember, we had five, one, two, three, four, five ranges, and the first one we needed to move zero, and then it was going to be one by three. Then the next one needed to move over one, and it's one by three. Then over two, three, and finally four. So watch this. We can just give it multiple starting points. And it will know, because we're going to give it an array of numbers, it'll know to extract five different ranges. So I'm going to use curly brackets, that's array syntax, and then type 0, comma 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4. Those are all of the um, how far from the starting position you want to move. Because remember, the first one is 0, but it's going to be 1 by 3. The next one's 1, and it'll be 1 by 3. So we got the fact that we put an array in there, it'll know to extract multiple ranges. Now the height, remember it's always going to be 1 by 3. And this, if we leave it out, it knows, it looks here and says how many rows are there. There's one, so we can just leave it out. By default, it will assume it's height 1. And now width, we got to tell it width. So I'm going to click right there, 3. Now 
that'll do it for the ranges. Now, the sad thing about the offset is I have no idea how to, we usually do this F9 trick, and I have no idea either with F9 or the formula evaluator to show you that it's actually doing what, what we're saying here. I'm going to control Z, but if we put it inside of another function, it'll actually um, operate in, a, in accordance to those five ranges. So we're going to use subtotal. Subtotal is great. Um, we can tell it what function we want to use, and we want 9 for sum, so I'm going to type 9. That, <laughs> that's the function argument, and then the reference. There it is. We'll leave that there. Now watch this one. I highlight this and hit F9. Now, boom. It gives us exactly what we had here, 181, 201, 164, etc. I'm going to control Z. The whole trick was to create this array of references was to put that array constant there. Now, the array constant is great because it's quite easy compared to if we wanted it more dynamic. So if you're uh, template was always this size and it wasn't going to change, that'll work fine. We can just put the max around that and we have our formula. Now the cool thing here is with array constants, this means we typed it in an array syntax. Curly brackets contain the array. Commas mean across the columns. Um, semicolons would mean row. But when we type it in, we can just hit enter. Whoops. And it'll work. We can copy this down. It works beautifully. All right. Uh, now, let's think about how to make this more dynamic. What if we wanted this template in, to be able to insert you know, columns and have the formula just update? Well, then we have to create this array with a dynamic formula. So it's creating an array from 0 to 4. Now, in other videos, we have seen how to use the row an index function together to create an array of numbers. Before we use the row and indirect, let's just see if we can create um, the numbers 1 to 5, or uh, 0 to 4 is ultimately what we need. So I'm going to type a formula, and I'm going to put in double quotes, 1 colon, and then end double quote. That's just like a reference, a row reference. One colon to some other number will give us uh, the number of rows. I'm going to use the ampersand shift 7 to join. And now I want, because it's, it's dynamic, I don't know if it's going to be 1 to 7 or 1 to 5 or whatever. I'm going to use the columns. Columns counts columns. So if I highlight that range, says, how many columns are there from A to G? There are seven. Now let's just see if this works. Hit the F9 key, one to seven. Well, that's not what we want, because we want zero to four, ultimately, control Z. Well, let's go ahead and subtract from that columns, because notice th uh, that right there, uh, sorry, the columns is just a number. It's seven, so I can subtract from it three. And now you can see that this part right here, F9, is 4, Control z and then the whole thing will give us 1 to 4, F9 key. Now, it would be great if we could put 0 to 4 here, um, but, oops, Control z but the indirect and the row function will not like that 0, because it's going to interpret it as a reference, and there is no 0 row. So actually, I have 1 to 4 here. What I really want is 1 to 5, and then we're going to subtract um, 1 later. So I'm going to add back 1, and then F9. OK, so that's 1 to 5. After we run the indirect and row, it'll give us 1 to 5 in an, an array of numbers, and we can subtract uh, one from it and get 0 to 4, control Z. Right? This is a text string right here. So functions cannot understand a text string that represents a number. So I'm going to use indirect. And indirect, its sole purpose is to take a text string and convert it back to a reference. Now, I can't uh, F9 that because it will be too big, too many characters for a formula. So I'm going to take that reference, which is just, hey, row 1 to 5. And I'm going to say, give me the row. And the row will finally give us an array of numbers. Hit the F9, 1 to 5. And now, this is a real array, not a text string. And so we can subtract 1. And we get our 0 to 4. Control Z. Now I'm going to Control C. Whoops. Control Z. Control CC. 
That opens up the clipboard and uh, copies it. And I'm going to just hit uh, delete backspace. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy this. Control C. So I have two things on the clipboard. I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on that one. And now all I need to do is highlight that very carefully. And then click there. And there is our formula that will be dynamic. Now, with the array constant, we didn't have to use Control Shift Enter, but here we're going to have to use Control Shift Enter. So I'm holding Control Shift and Enter. You can see that curly bracket. That's Excel telling you I understand that this is an array formula. Copy it down, and sure enough, that is uh, dynamic. Now, if we were to insert any uh, columns here and put some numbers, 500. 500 or something like that. Right now, uh, this one would work just fine. This one is not working because it's hard coded in. And this one down here will not work either because we, we inserted a column. Guess what? That sum function is now looking at 4. So neither one of the first two methods are dynamic, whereas this one gets it right. All right, uh, that is how to find the max of uh, any th consecutive three-week totals. And uh, first place I saw a formula like this, of course, was where? Mr. Excel message board and Dominique. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.